Hey Aries, and welcome to your October 2017 General Tarot Forecast. This is Sky here to give you guys hopefully another amazing reading for your month ahead. And wow, October is going to be really huge for you guys. There's definitely a huge change in Aries energy coming, as I've kind of felt this for a while. I really think since the eclipse back in August, you're starting to see some really um, drastic changes based on what's happened to you over the last around like one to two years. Um, it's really starting to come full circle at this point in time. And I really think that a lot of you are kind of waking up here at like the end of September um, or moving into October and realizing like, wow, my life is not where I thought it would be. My life is kind of perhaps falling apart in some ways, but through that I'm gaining something that ultimately shows me where I'm going because you guys do have the tower in your reading this month. Um, there's a lot of things for Aries that couldn't be, or a lot of things that just could not continue on the momentum that you had it going. And it's never really a particularly bad thing when the tower comes up, but it is always a sign that there is a bit of a feeling of discomfort. Um, perhaps a few things that you had envisioned for the future are not quite following through in the way you had imagined, and people may not really be acting in a way that you feel benefits you or um, represents what you, like the intention that you give to them. So I think that that's really been a big thing for Aries lately is finding people who are at the same level of intention as you are. Um, like you have really changed your intentions a lot. Like I really think over the last year, I think maybe since around this time last year, maybe even like August or September of 2016, really was the catalyzation point of you guys starting to change your intentions, starting to ask yourself, what do I want? Because Aries is a sign of the self. It is um, the first sign of the zodiac. It's the youngest sign of the zodiac. So um, you guys have a sort of um, understanding of self-value, um, of self-instincts, of intuition. It's at kind of a different level than like Cancer or Scorpio or, or even Leo, which are other self-signs. Um, it's almost at just like, again, an instinctual level. It's like you're born and you realize how to um, sort of manifest yourself into the world as an Aries. So I think to wrap that back around, since like September or August of 2016, that kind of went to, a next, to the next level and you realized, okay, I'm not quite manifesting what I want in the world. I'm not quite manifesting what I need. And through that, you've sort of had this entire year of like really huge changes, even if you've had a similar um, exterior circumstance throughout the last year, which most of you don't, but even if you have, there have been a lot of really strong interior changes. You've probably started to see your relationships start to um, change up. Maybe you're not harmonizing very well with people who've been in your life for a long time. Um, anything that's been there for a long time is kind of being shed right now. Like if you've lived in the same house or the same town, or been in the same relationship, um, had the same values for a really long time now, you're going to probably start to see some changes during this time of what you hold dear, of what you're prioritizing. Um, and that's sort of, I think, what's difficult for Aries because, again, you are you have strong self-value and you can be very loyal. Um, most Aries. Some Aries can struggle with loyalty, but I feel like the majority of Aries do really well with it. Um, and that's sort of the issue is because you guys are so loyal and you're so um, strong with your self-value that it can be hard to change. It can be hard to change these new ideas. On one hand, you really like adventures. You really like spontaneity. But on the other hand, you realize that too many quick changes can kind of um, sap your momentum and can kind of sap what you have going for a long time. So in that way, I feel that some of you have kind of undermined yourself in the last year because you've sort of thought, okay, I have these new ideas. I have these new ambitions. I have these new goals. I want to be in the new relationship. I want to move to the new town or the new city. And then you're saying, but I have all of this going for me here. I have all of this going for me in this relationship. Maybe in 10 years from now in this job, I'm going to be where I want to be. So for that reason, I'm going to choose to not be spontaneous and I'm going to choose to maintain um, a situation that's not quite matching up with my intentions. And October comes in Aries to decide. As you're deciding time, like I'm either going to stay or I'm going to go. That's a huge thing for Aries this month. Like, are you staying or are you going? Are you continuing or are you quitting something? A lot of you are confronting addictions this month. A lot of you are confronting long-running codependent relationships. And a lot of you are um, 
ultimately choosing to not be the victim, choosing to not put yourself in a situation where your intentions are not honored, which I'm so happy to see for you guys. Well, Aries is not a victim sign. Like if there's any sign in the Zodiac to like not play the victim, it's Aries. Um, so you guys might have sort of found yourself since like August 2017, like since the eclipse, you might have found yourself sort of feeling like a victim. And some of you were even victimized for sure with the Tower Energy and the Eight of Swords. Those are sort of like victim cards. So some of you may have sort of been... Um, feeling abused or victimized in some way and you realize okay now that's my sign I've just got to get out because I'm not the victim there's a lot of that type of thing coming forward for you guys um, you can start a new relationship this month but it's best to go it alone it's best to be in solitude and reflection as it kind of is for everybody right now a very very small amount of people can start healthy new relationships in October and September but it's not many because the I always say that September, like Virgo and Libra time are not the best times to start relationships. Um, Libra can be decent. I mean, it is a Venus sign, but um, there's just something about the eclipse energy or something that has changed that idea for me. I feel like the last two years from like summer to fall really are not good times for relationships to start. But that's that's not everybody, but it's most people. It's good to have this time in solitude because when you're alone during like Virgo and Libra time and moving into Scorpio time, you don't have distractions to sort of um, take away your attention from that which is actually pulling you down, like within yourself. You can really cover up self-sabotage tendencies. You can really blur any ideas of disillusionment by being with someone else. And if you're alone, you can really see it very clearly and you can know um, more clearly how to you know, move through it. Whereas if you're with somebody else, it can kind of go deeper into your subconscious and start... Uh, working in ways that you're not so aware of. But on that note, I want to go ahead and start looking at your reading from the week to week, and we will see more clearly what's coming forward for you guys. Um, first week, you guys have seven of pentacles. I'm yeah, seven of pentacles. Sometimes I get seven and eight mixed up. Seven of pentacles rooted down by the empress reversed, and. Um, this is definitely sort of a lot about money and a lot about career. Uh, you're definitely reflecting on, again, like, am I happy here? Am I enjoying what I'm doing to make my living? Because I will say for you guys, there are a lot of opportunities. Um, it seems to me that you are very employable, like you're very hireable um, during this time. And if you were to make a switch in career, I think that it's good to start preparing. I wouldn't recommend the second week of October for it. Um, or even maybe all of October might not be the best time to actually implement your ideas and actions, but it's a good time to make a plan. I feel like in November or December, and really good in January of like 2018 to actually do it to actually have the change but here you can figure out what you actually want to do um in the first week you're you're should sorry in the first week you will be sort of understanding what it is that you want to do you should sort of be getting um an influx of inspiration and motivations towards what you actually like and that could be one of the biggest fears that's causing you to sort of um get desperate in october aries is you might just sort of not be feeling like what it is like you've all you're always very connected to motivation and inspiration um so when aries loses that or when aries isn't picking up on that kind of thing it can be quite a crisis for you um, some of you are also feeling kind of um, infertile, like whether that be energetically or physically. Some of you might be trying to like have children and not really um, being able to do that. Or some of you might just be like having all these new ideas that aren't coming to fruition. Um, the Empress Reverse is a sign that you are trying to create something. You are trying to birth a new idea or um, anything new really, and it's not coming to fruition. Although through October, you get what it is to where you understand what you need to do it, but it's hard to actually make it happen. Um, although, although you can make a lot of money in October, that's definitely true. Um, but it can be the type of thing where you're making so much money and you realize, wow, it was never a financial problem in the first place. Like this fear that I have for the future before I could say, oh, it's only because I was making that amount of money per month. And, um, it was hard to make ends meet. And then you realize, wow, now that I make so much more, it's not changing. My outlook is not changing. So it can be that kind of thing in the first week as well. In the second week, you guys have the tower rooted down by seven of wands. This is definitely the most real week of October. I don't know, the third week. Actually, I would say the 
<laughs> the second, third, and fourth week are very, very potent and powerful for you. Lots of really strong experiences coming forward, almost like something you probably haven't seen in all of 2017 yet. Um, but specifically, the second week really kicks it off, and you could feel really like jarred during this time. Um, breakups can happen here. Um, you can quit a job or get fired here. Um, like your house can burn down here. I really I don't mean to like project negativity, but it's only with the aim to like prepare you. Like don't forget to turn the oven off. Um, if you don't want to lose your job, like show up on time this week. Um, if you don't want the relationship to end, make sure you're not like doing all these things to, you know, sort of unconsciously sabotage it or in whatever conscious way you can try to keep things going. But it, the tower is usually also a sign that it's too far gone. So there's not really much you can do at this time. Um, but small actions to sort of prevent like freak accidents, like, um, running out of gas or getting a flat tire. Like it's a good time to like get the, your, check your tires to, um, make sure that your cars are running good, like just like small things to prevent any like careless things from happening. That way only the faded things happen. Um, Cause I don't want you guys to like lose your job and get a flat tire and get, get, have like a breakup during the same day or something. Um, but you're, okay, this is really interesting. I'm sort of getting a whole new idea on what this energy represents. You are sort of facing crisis in your life right now in a different way than you ever have before. With Seven of Wands rooting that down, it's like you're on higher ground. Um, you're you're at a level of height in your career or in your life that you've never quite achieved before. Even if you feel like you're at a rock bottom, there's something about that that's like, you have more wisdom, you have more understanding of what's going on, more so than you ever have in your life before. So, um, you can really see how um, through this from crisis, from difficult experiences, you will start to gain more rewards than you have before as well. Um, Aries can be one of those signs that kind of like avoids crisis at like any cost or either that or it becomes like this big adventure that you wholeheartedly embrace. And I feel like you're finally kind of, kind of finding a middle ground here that helps you to evolve more because as you step into the third week, you get that eight of swords you're down by judgment. Um, a huge evolution is happening here. Again, I feel like you're starting to shift into like victim mode or something and it's not like false. It's not like, oh, I'm a damsel in distress like victim. It's like you're actually sort of feeling victimized here. You're actually sort of feeling like somebody is trying to um, coerce you into doing something or trying to make you be below yourself. And it's like something clicks very strongly. And maybe you could actually see this through somebody else's situation too, or you could see this through something that's not even directly correlating with you. Although for the majority of you, you're still stuck in something or you're still experiencing it yourself. But you definitely, through this, have a huge awakening, a huge click with something. And for a lot of you, it could be your past or it could be like past heartbreaks that you might have been struggling to come uh, to the other side with since last year. Um, a lot of you went through a divorce or a lot of you went through um, some sort of really treacherous breakup. And maybe most of you have been, for the most part, single over the last year and have had a really difficult uh, connection with past relationships or past um, pain. And I really feel like October is the month that pushes you to the place where you understand what actually happened, where you understand your truth in um, the whole scheme of events that went down, and ultimately where you just kind of come to new conclusions. Um, and it's kind of undecided as well. When I feel Aries energy for October, I sort of feel like um, there is a bit of a question mark, there is a bit of um, unforeseen territory or something, because there are a lot of decisions that you still have to make moving into October. Um, a lot of things that are very much deciding how this impacts a lot of you, because I think a lot of you have kind of tried to prolong sort of an easy period of time where you're not having to make a lot of decisions, where you're not having to really um, reach out to people or um, create any kind of chaos, while at the same time knowing that something has to be... Um, talked about or something has to be confronted. So you still have to confront those things before some of these decisions get made, before some of these universal uh, energies start to kick in. But the third week definitely might be the week that you do it. You might reach out to the person who you had the breakup with. You might reach out to the person who made you feel like a victim or who made you feel um, like your life couldn't go on the way that it did. You might finally confront that and through that realize how easier, how much easier it could have been for you to move on in the first place. Um, which puts you into the fourth week, which is an interesting energy for me. The Ace of Cups reversed, you're down by Five of Cups reversed. 
you know, maybe through confronting this person from the past or through confronting a fear that you just have in general, you find yourself with a whole new outlook on love. You find yourself with a whole new outlook on relationships and your past and who people were to you. You could have little small ideas like, um, well, I never even loved that person anyway, even if you know that you did or that like the other person never actually loved you. And it's kind of more like this isn't really Aries territory for me, but it's interesting to see this energy come in for you um, because it, it's not usual. It's not um, what usually happens for Aries. Um, whatever comes forward for you in the fourth week of October, I wouldn't plan on staying there for too long. I wouldn't plan on trying to really make consistent what comes forward during this time. Rather, it would be good to really hone in on your uh, spontaneity and on your adventurous ways because it does sort of feel more like a cancer or a Scorpio type of thing happening to you in the fourth week. Maybe some of you have met a water sign or some of you are trying to heal with a water sign or from a water sign and you really have to, I feel, access your inner fire energy to sort of rise above it because it's not really um, a field of energy that gives much to Aries. Although some of you, of course, may have like water moons or rising signs or other influences in your chart, in which case I would check out those signs readings to get more clarification on that side of you. But for Aries energy in general, the fourth week gives to you something that can't really go on or something that you just have to sort of flirt with and not really make a strong part of your life. And that to me feels like um, being more nostalgic, being really oriented towards the past, um, becoming more pessimistic, relating to like relationships and relating to who people were to you, things like that that don't really work out for Aries. Um, really become a pioneer in the fourth week and do something to, um, you know, counteract that energy. Because again, Ace of Cups is sort of a bad outlook on relationships, sort of like a pessimistic attitude. And then Five of Cups Reverse could be like rising above pessimism, but it's also just like really down in the dumps or feeling a little bit existential. So um, yeah, you just really have to be happy with what you have because some of you have everything. Some of you are really getting a lot of money or really getting a lot of um, new job opportunities. And it is interesting how through that you can see all of the small inconsistencies of your emotional patterns, of your spiritual growth, and um, you can kind of sort of get what you wish for this month, and you sort of start to realize, like, careful what you wish for type of mentality, um, because you do get it this month, and you're feeling kind of um, conflicted with it. But overall, you guys, you have to understand how great this energy is for you, how great this energy um makes you be in the future. Um, it's such a huge period of growth and it's almost something that I can't quite put words to. So definitely watch your sun, moon, rising sign because Aries energy is quite uh, undecided for me right now. Um, and it's sort of just kind of like a guessing game, but that's good. That's a good thing though. It's not a bad thing because it's better to have options and to be more fluid right now than to be really um, sort of readable. Anyway, I so appreciate you guys, and if this reading was helpful for you guys, I really hope you'll get the chance to check out my new Patreon page. The link should be popping up in the center of your screen right now. Through Patreon, you can see my readings with no ads and also have early access to them. I also do monthly drawings for free readings and have lots of fun discussions, so if you are interested, you can be sure and check it out. If you guys would like to book a private reading with me, that link is in the description box, and um, I hope that you'll get the chance to subscribe to my YouTube channel here now if you want to keep track of the reading process and what all I am putting out. Um, I hope you guys have an amazing October, and I will be seeing you in November. Bye!